Hello everybody, welcome to the Brazen Tinker podcast. My name is Melanie and this is a video cast mainly about knitting. Oh, it is, I'm a little bit flustered and busy and um, I don't really have time for a podcast today, but I just wanted to squeeze one in anyway, um, because it's fun. So welcome, welcome. So happy you're here. Um, I've been knitting a lot of Christmas stuff, so uh, I'm going to be heading into that. Today is December 5th, the December the 5th which is the day that traditionally the Netherlands celebrates Sinterklaas, which is a little bit of a precursor to um, Santa Claus. And I will be talking about that later because I uh, just wrapped a big bag. Well, actually, it's a small bag of presents. I'm not really a Sinterklaas person, but I... Um, yeah, we're just going to celebrate it a little bit because um, my son's school is very into Sinterklaas and I don't want him to feel left out. So yeah, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna do some very, very small, tiny presents, um, mainly for him. He's four and uh, then we're, you know, when it's done, um, we're going full into Christmas mode. I hope we have time to get our Christmas tree this weekend. So in the Netherlands, because Sinterklaas, um, comes before Christmas, there is this sort of unspoken rule that you are not allowed to have a Christmas tree up in your living room decorated um, until after Sinterklaas leaves. Um, And most people actually do this. Um, So you see very, very few. Like people like me, I've put up some Christmas decorations, some lights and some sort of like figurines and that kind of stuff. But we don't put up a Christmas tree until after uh, December 5th. So um, this weekend, sorry, this weekend is always like... um, yeah, it's, it's a big weekend to buy a Christmas tree because it's allowed and uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's actually, so I work in IT and I have a lot of international colleagues, Portuguese, Brazilians, Kenyans, Eastern Europeans, like everywhere. And um, they're, they're, one of the Portuguese girls was, sh- was saying like, oh, Melanie, one of my neighbors has put up that Christmas tree already. How dare they? So it's um it's fun to see people sort of like get into Dutch culture so quickly that they are poo-pooing their neighbors for putting up a Christmas tree too soon in the year. Um but let's get into the knitting first and then um we can talk about celebrations after that. I'm drinking some uh hot Christmas Starbucks tea, uh, coffee, sorry, Starbucks coffee. Ah, it's a little bit too strong. Um, I think I was a little bit impatient with the, um, uh, with the plunger today. Uh, this is a Hudson's Bay mug. Hudson's Bay, um, a couple of years ago opened out of nowhere, opened 15 department stores in the Netherlands. Um, and yeah, they're not doing great so they're probably leaving again and um, there's been some court cases with people's contracts and uh, lease contracts and all that kind of jazz so it's been quite interesting but they've also have um, they also have uh, a bunch of stuff on sale for very 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 good deals actually Um, so Yeah, we like to get some Hudson Bay mugs. Derek, my boyfriend, is Canadian. And since it's a Canadian company, it's just nice to have some of that stuff in the house. Um, Okay. Um, Talking about Derek, uh, this is one of my finished objects this week. I knit him a Christmas stocking. And um, so it's got his name on it. And I put in some moose uh it has a norwegian sort of noughts and crosses design i put in some bikes because we're dutch people snowflake motif some christmas trees 
and an anchor because Derek is very into boats and sailboats and that kind of stuff. So I really cheated with this thing because this is what the back look like looks like. <laughs> It has none of the pictures. But my thinking was, we're just going to hang it up um, against a wall somewhere. And it will probably only, yeah, you'll only see one side. So it doesn't really matter what the back looks like. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's still damp from blocking. Uh, this is all alpaca leftover yarn. And I, I just feel that alpaca doesn't repel water as well as sheep's wool does so this has been drying for two and a half days and it's still super super damp so oh well we'll just have to be patient it's not christmas yet it's fine another finished object finally finally i finished my marley shawl um that i knit out of pickles yarn this is a pattern by Andrea Maori, and this is also still a little bit damp, <laughs> but it is so big and I'm so, so super happy with it. It is nice and warm. Oh, it smells so sheepy and I love the colours and it's so autumnal. Great. I love this yarn. I love this shawl. I am so, so happy with this, how this turned out. So as soon as this dries, I'll probably be living in it. It is cold as today. I am shocked. I'm shocked how cold it is. Really, really, it was very nippy. I went on the on the bike uh, today because uh, my son's school, they um, they had like a little mini center class thing going on and I was one of the uh, helper parents. And we, so I tried to get to school early today, of course, which made me forget his 10 o'clock snack, but oh well, he can have paper nota. Um, but yeah, we got on the bike and I was like, oh my goodness, this is nippy. Wow, really cold. So I was really, really happy that I was wearing my mohair cardigan as per usual. I've like basically been wearing this non-stop. Um, it's, yeah, if you are like in a cold country, I cannot recommend a giant alpaca sheep's wool mohair cardigan enough. It is the most perfect thing to be in when it's the cold season. Okay, so what else have I been knitting? Oh yeah, I started my own stocking and of course I wanted to add some mohair that I had left over. I like these stocking, like Christmas decoration stuff. It's so good to get rid of your leftovers. It's fantastic. And so I started some mohair and then I did some um, blueberry waffle stitch in the grey and I'm not sure if I'm going to do a band of some stranded knitting now or if I'm just going to continue doing different um, sort of textured patterns in this stocking. I haven't decided yet. Um, I honestly, it'll probably be just what, what I fancy when I pick this up, uh, tonight when I'm sitting on the couch, but I do love this texture and the fluffiness of the mohair. This is, I think this is drops because of the way that it is sort of rolled up. It's one of those roly cakes. So I think it's drops. I just don't remember. I had some really white mohair from Filkalana somewhere, but it could be anywhere really. So I'm finishing that as part of my, so I was really good this year and I made a list of all my sort of December to do's. So presents that I have to get people, um, 
things that I am organizing or things where when somebody else is organizing it I have to add my wishes and knits that I want to have finished this year and all that kind of stuff and I'm so I sometimes do bullet journaling I'm not really good with keeping it up but I'm really really happy with my December to do page and just a bunch of check boxes and it feels so good to check things off I do sometimes remember that I forgot to add something to the list and then you cross something off and then you add a new to do but oh well I think that is um such is life so for Derek and uh, my son's uh, Christmas stocking, I um, so my son's Christmas stocking was mainly the um, main attraction pattern by Knit Picks, but I've also been adding things from this book, the Alternate Stitch Stitch Dictionary, and it has such great. Um, yeah stitch patterns in it that's where I got the bicycle from and what is great about it is that it has a number at the bottom of each stitch pattern that says like oh this is an 18 stitch repeat 15 stitch repeat 28 stitch repeat but you could probably cut this in half but sure um but that makes it so easy to find something that could work within this number of stitches that you have cast on for your stocking. So that's kind of how I would recommend doing it. Just find a bunch of um, stitch patterns that you want to do. If you're, if you're like me and going sort of like off grid. Um, and then yeah, make sure they're in the same sort of stitch count because you can always fudge it, right? You can like put an extra empty stitch at the beginning or the end um but yeah just get some of the ones that you like get the average stitch count um find out how many repeats you want to do and then you can cast on that many stitches and then um yeah just knit your way down do remember though that if you are knitting from the top down that um if you have your stitch pattern and it is a picture that needs to be um, oriented in a certain f fashion. So let me just grab a quick example. So here, for instance, um, here we have one that has aliens on it. Imagine you want aliens on your stocking. I'm not judging, I totally understand that. Um, when you are normally knitting this, you would start at the bottom and work your way up. Except when you're knitting top down, you really need to remember to hold your book upside down um, so that you can knit it like that um, because you're in effect knitting your stocking upside down. So don't forget to do that. I did that a couple of times. That's where these nuggets of wisdom come from really. It's mistakes that I have made in the past. Um, and some other, uh, stitch patterns. If I want to look for more sort of Scandinavian true Christmas sweater style patterns, I always refer to this book. This is, uh, Arna and Carlos, the Christmas ball book. This is actually the Dutch version. It doesn't matter which version you get because the basic ball pattern is just one page and you can figure that out it's just cast on a number of stitches and it increase and then at some point decrease um and then every other page is just um a stitch pattern of something that fits onto the ball and these are so great because you can just sort of ignore the bottom part of the ball and the top part of the ball and then just do the middle bit for the stitch. So I've also uh, been looking, oh yeah, so this is where I got Derek's anchor from for his stocking. And also the moose heads are also from this book. So if you're looking for this in an English speaking country, I think the book is called uh, Arna and Carlos 55 Christmas Balls to Knit could be wrong if you are in a scandinavian country it's probably like eula cooler something like that like yule balls 
something like that. Anyway, in Dutch, it's Kerstballenbreien. Um, it's great. It's a great book. It, this is like such a high quality, nice picture book just to have anyway. I remember when this came out. Everybody was like, oh, craft books can look this beautiful. I'm so shocked. Um, so, and because, crinkle, crinkle, because I was like going through that uh, book, I was like, oh, I do want to actually knit some Christmas balls. Because I was thinking I could knit some uh, Christmas balls for um, my son's teacher's and uh just like at the last day of the school year he can give them some because these are really one they're really fast to knit super fun to knit they are so cute um i knit them with sock yarn with a 2.5 needle i want to say um and yeah they're really quick and then you can just stuff them and put a little loop on them and then if you wrap them in like a see-through plastic with a red bow on it it just looks really good and like very I don't know very fancy um so I think that would be nice for his teachers because they do work really really hard so I'm gonna make that um yeah, that's it for knitting. I have been working on my socks a little bit more, but not. I didn't feel like it was enough progress that I wanted to cut them out and show them on the podcast again. Um, so, yeah, um, I wanted to say thank you, everybody, who has been watching my Vlogmas videos. So this year for Vlogmas, I, I wanted to partake in Vlogmas, which is a thing where on YouTube people make a vlog video every day for the month of December leading up to Christmas. And it always looks so much fun, but making vlog videos takes a lot of time. There is a lot of editing, there is a lot of being mentally aware all moments of the day that you really should be grabbing your camera and filming it because otherwise at the end of the day you don't have enough video footage um which is hard like recording podcasts is fun and it's also it does take a bit of work but I'm just sitting here I've made a mental note that at some point I'm going to record I can sit in front of the camera um, I have all my stuff, I know what I'm going to talk about and then when it's done, it's done and I put my camera away and then it's over. But for Vlogmas, if you're making vlog style videos, it's just a lot of work and I work four days a week and the days that I go to the office, I, you know, it's, it's dark here uh, in the Netherlands. It's dark when I leave to go to the office and it's dark when I come back. Um, there is not much that is going on at the office. It's just me typing behind a keyboard, behind a screen. So yeah, there's not, you know, I don't have a sort of life where I go out for coffee with friends on a daily basis or go shopping all the time or like, like my life is interesting, but maybe not visually as interesting as other people's lives. And so I was like, okay, I'm just not going to do vlog videos, but I do really want to do something. And so I chose to read a story and every night I read a little bit from uh, Charles, Dick Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. But soon it rang loudly and so did every bell in the house. This might have lasted half a minute or, or a minute, but it seemed an hour the bells ceased as they had begun together. They were succeeded by a clanking noise deep down below. And I chose that book because it's Christmas and it's in the public domain. So um, it, there are no copyrights on it. You can just read and then that's fine. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that and I will also publish a video today 
and um, a bunch of people have been following that and sort of like, yeah, just every day listen to me <laughs> telling you a story and sort of reading this book together. And I thought that was a lovely idea and I just kind of went for it. And I didn't prepare very well. So I'm like every day I'm like a little bit stressed <laughs> to get stuff uh, edited and published online. This is something that I could have prepared ahead of time. I did not, and um, but I'm still having a lot of fun doing it. So if you are interested in listening to that, you can just find my vlog videos um, on this channel. I made a playlist so you can click on the playlist and then it will have all the episodes. And then um, usually it's just a couple of minutes of me sort of going through my day, what I did that day. So to sort of keep that vlogmas identity and then I'm just uh, for the rest of the video it's just me uh, reading you a story. It's not for everybody, I totally understand that, that's fine um, and maybe yeah you don't have time every day to listen to it um, and that's why I've been making the playlist so that you can sort of um, catch up quite easily. Um, so yeah, um, let's head, head to the kitchen and wrap some presents. Cinder glass is like the Dutch version of Christmas. If you go back, way back when, <laughs> like in the north, in like Scandinavia, they had uh, the Norse mythology and they celebrate Yule and then Odin is like the Yule father. And uh, we have Cinder Klaas, who is Saint Nicholas who in the original sort of lore is a bishop from Turkey. Um, but for some reason we tell children that Sinterklaas lives in Spain, but I will. Um, but um, so when at some point the Dutch went to the States and when New York was still New Amsterdam, um, the sort of like Yule Father Odin and Sinterklaas mashed together and birthed, um, uh, yeah, Father Christmas, S Santa Claus, I guess. Um, yeah, I always wondered, like, why do British people say Father Christmas and why do Americans say Santa Claus? Um, but yeah, Santa Claus is more Sinterklaas and Father Christmas is Yule Father. Um, Odin, the Allfather in um, in Norse mythology. So that's super interesting. Anyway, that's where that comes from. We, for some reason now, sort of, yeah, Christmas has come back at some point in history in the Netherlands. So now we just celebrate both. We celebrate Christmas and um, Sinterklaas. So yay for us. Um, my family's never been super hardcore Sinterklaas fans because I'm from a like a half British, half Dutch family. And so um, I also am not really hardcore Sinterklaas person, um, but I am going to wrap some presents because today is the 5th of December uh, for my son and for me and Derek as to sort of keep up appearances that we are also getting presents <clears throat> and I'm probably just going to put it in the hallway um, right before dinner time and then have one of the neighbours sort of like when we're finished ha having dinner knock on our front door really really loud and then I think that's what I'm going to do so I'm just going to wrap all the presents now and then um, yeah, hopefully I can find one of the neighbours and ask them to knock at the door uh, this evening. Anyway, I'm going to start wrapping some stuff.
And now I'm going to hide this bag somewhere. So I completely forgot about this because I've been since a class stressed and stuff like that. Um, but I just wanted to tell you about this thing that I am wearing because this is what happened. A couple of weeks ago, I thought I want to, um, I really want to like, have a t-shirt or a sweater that has like some fun knitting slogans on it. It's sort of like, um, even on days when I'm not wearing knitwear, I want to showcase that I am a knitter with a capital K. And I was looking around and I couldn't really find anything that I liked. And so I thought, fine, I'll just make it myself. And so I came up with this thing, this sort of, on Wednesdays, we hold it double with mohair because I do. It's a play on the line from the movie Mean Girls on Wednesdays, we wear pink. And I thought it was funny. And so, yeah, I, this was created and I found a place, um, cause what I, there are a couple of places where you can do on demand printing. So I load up the file for this, um, design and they, they handle the printing and the shipping and all that kind of stuff. The only thing that I was really concerned about was that I know I have viewers in both Europe and the US and nobody wants to do international shipping because it takes forever and you get hit with custom charges and it's just not fun. So I really wanted to look for a place that has um, fulfillment in both the US as in Europe. And I know I have viewers outside of Europe, outside of the US. Um, there is nobody that does uh, fulfillment everywhere in the world, unfortunately. If if there was, I would totally pick that. But I found um, a Teespring. There's a couple of places that you can do um, like Redbubble and Spreadshirt and that kind of stuff. But what Teespring does is they, if you place an order in the US, the um, fulfillment happens in the US. And if you place uh, an order in Europe, the fulfillment happens in Europe. So it's much faster. There is no international shipping, which is wasteful anyway, if it's not necessary. Um, so I am so, so happy with that. Um, so there's a link below in the description box. If this is something that you are interested in also, um, yeah, I now have <laughs> Braden Tinker t-shirts, everybody. Um, I am thinking about doing more designs and I'm just kind of gonna do it on a, whenever I think of something fun, I'm just gonna add that to the shop. And yeah, I'm so happy with this sweater. I've been wearing it to work. There are some knitters at my job and somebody was saying like, oh, it's <laughs> a nice sweater. So um, I have ordered sam samples for myself. Most of it is still underway, um, but I just wanted to get this sort of like out there so that if you are interested and if you do want to order something before Christmas, it's still possible um, depending on where you live. Today, I, uh, I unfortunately don't have a bundle with Ravelry gems. Um, mainly because I was so busy with sort of organizing all the Vlogmas video things that I just didn't have time for it. So I, yeah, I will do um, a bundle next week, which will have Christmas stuff. And I'll try and find sort of hidden gems of Ravelry, Christmas gift, giftable patterns of quick small knits. I think that would be nice to see um but yeah that's it for this week i am meeting some friends for the christmas market which is in harlem this the city that i live in 
um, this weekend. It's a really big Christmas market. The city is very proud of her Christmas market. And so I will try and shoot some footage off of that so that you can see what it looks like. Because it's usually quite fun. There's like bands playing music. There's food and drink and people selling stuff. And um, they have choirs kind of walking around singing songs. And it's quite nice. I wouldn't say it's a super, super traditional Christmas market, but it really has like a good, good fun vibe, fun vibe. So yay. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you are knitting, having like fun, festive knits to do and are not stressed and Christmas will happen anyway, whether you're stressed or not. So might as well not be stressed. Um, happy knitting and I hope to see you all tonight for Vlogmas or um, uh, yeah tomorrow for Vlogmas and if that's not your cup of tea I'll see you again next week bye